Hello. So today I'm really excited to talk about this joint work uh, with Matt, who's now in the Feli, and Justine and Trini, who are my advisors at Carnegie Mellon. And my name is Ronnie Shawer. So today I'm going to talk to you about this work um, on congestion control deployment. So let me start by motivating why we care about this and why you should too. So we want to answer the seemingly simple question. If you design a new congestion control algorithm TACO, how do you show that TACO is reasonable to deploy in the internet today? Well, typically we try to say a new algorithm TACO is reasonable to deploy in the internet if it fairly shares with widely deployed legacy algorithms pair. For example, here are a bunch of graphs and tables all trying to use fairness to make the argument that their algorithm won't be too aggressive towards the status quo, which today is typically regarded to be cubic. But here's the thing, everyone falls short of actually achieving fair outcomes. But everyone still has to try to make these arguments that their algorithm is deployable. So let's look at some examples of what these arguments look like. So I don't want to dig into the graphs here, I just want to draw your attention to the arguments. So in the cubic paper, they show results where cubic is unfair to Reno, but argue that this is outside of the TCP friendly region, and that this doesn't highly impact Reno's performance, whatever that means. And in early presentations on BBR, Google showed that BBR v1 was unfair to cubic and shallow buffer networks and basically said they'll fix it in later versions of BBR by modeling those shallow buffer situations. PCC Vivace also showed it could be unfair to cubic, but argued that as the number of cubic senders increases, it achieves the best fairness among new generation algorithms. And COPA makes a similar argument that it's much more fair than BBR and PCC, and it uses bandwidth that Cubic wasn't going to use anyway. So I highlight all of these arguments here to drive home this point that in practice, we rarely can or even want to achieve fair outcomes, because it turns out fairness is either too restrict restrictive or impractical. Consequently, everyone ends up just sort of having to make these excuses about why their algorithm is still reasonable to deploy despite having unfair outcomes. And it's really unclear if these excuses are okay. So the problem is we're basically left with no real bar or threshold for what makes a new algorithm safe or reasonable to deploy in the internet today. So in, this pap in our paper and in this talk, we argue for the need for a practical deployment threshold. That is a bound on how aggressive any new algorithm, which I'll refer to as TACO throughout this talk, can be to any, C any legacy status quo widely deployed algorithm, which I'll refer to as PAIR in this talk. So the outline for this talk is as follows. First, I want to describe for you the desirable properties for a good deployment threshold. Then I'm going to define a new deployment threshold based on harm, which unlike fairness has all of these desirable properties. So let's jump right in and start by discussing what are the desirable properties for a good deployment threshold. Well, in our paper, we identify five such properties. We say a good deployment threshold should be practical, multi-metric, status quo biased, demand aware, and future proof. So those are just a bunch of words that don't mean anything to you yet. So let's start by defining what we mean by practical. So we've already seen that a threshold based on fairness just is not practical, right? Because no one can actually achieve fair outcomes. Therefore, a good deployment threshold needs to be practical in that it should actually be feasible in practice for a new congestion control algorithm to meet the threshold. So that's what we mean by practical. Next, we say a deployment threshold needs to be multi-metric. So let's illustrate what we mean by multi-metric through an example. So, <laughs> Assume, uh, so consider the scenario where let's say Beyonce is at home. She's trying to talk to her daughter, Blue Ivy, um, over Skype and over her hot home Wi-Fi access link. And let's say her access to the internet is really slow. So her access link is a slow bottleneck link here. And let's say it's using some new algorithm pair. Some, sorry, let's say it's using some old legacy congestion control algorithm pair. Now let's say Bayes connection 
using pair is able to achieve about five megabit per se megabit per second throughput and a good low latency. So this is when it's not sharing the bottleneck here, it's just alone. But now let's say her husband Jay-Z comes home and he wants to download the Windows operating system for some reason. So this is gonna be a large, long running download. And the server he's downloading from is using some brand new congestion control algorithm, Taco. Now let's say Taco is able to use the rest of the available bandwidth, but that this comes at a cost and Bay's latency is gonna go way up, so maybe now her video quality is terrible. So the impact on latency matters here as to whether or not we would say it's acceptable to deploy Taco in an internet with a ton of latency-sensitive applications using Pair. Therefore, it's important that a deployment threshold be able to consider a variety of metrics beyond just throughput. So metrics beyond just throughput are becoming increasingly important in the internet today when we have more and more applications that care about things like latency or jitter or loss rate. However, we can never really talk about anything other than throughput when we're stuck talking about fairness. So we're used to thinking about deploying algorithms as if the network is a pie that we're cutting up to share, but that doesn't make sense for performance metrics like latency, loss, or jitter. So that's what we mean by multi-metric. Now let's walk through an example to illustrate what we mean by status quo biased. Now let's say Beyonce is downloading the Linux operating system from a server using some popular legacy algorithm pair. So this algorithm, let's say it works well in Wi-Fi networks, so her download speed is just using all of the available bandwidth. Jay-Z comes home, he's still downloading Windows, and he's hit the server he's using is using some new algorithm taco. Now let's say unfortunately this time pair is too aggressive and so taco is only able to get one megabit per second throughput while Beyonce still gets nine. So in this case though there is imbalance I would actually say it's perfectly acceptable to deploy taco alongside pair, right? This is because the currently deployed legacy algorithm pair is the one being too aggressive towards the new algorithm taco, not the other way around. So when it comes to deployability, we don't actually care if the new algorithm is the one being hurt. Thus, a deployment threshold needs to be status quo biased. It should only be based on the impact that taco has on pair and not vice versa. As an example, James Fairness Index is not status quo bias, right? James Fairness Index would assign the same score if the new algorithm was one being harmed as if the old algorithm is the one being harmed. So it can't distinguish between these two scenarios, so it's not status quo biased. So next we say deployment threshold should be demand aware. Let's illustrate demand awareness through what? An example. So now let's say again, Beyonce is trying to download this large file. And the, and the server uses some legacy algorithm pair. But now let's say pair really sucks at fully utilizing all of the available bandwidth in a Wi-Fi network. So she's only getting a download speed of three megabits per second. So now Jay-Z comes along trying to download that Windows OS still using some fancy new algorithm Taco. Now let's say Taco's much better at utilizing the available bandwidth in this Wi-Fi network. So, but it's able to do that without hurting Bay's connection. So it's able to just use the rest of the available bandwidth and get seven megabits per second. So here again, it's perfectly reasonable to deploy Taco because it's not hurting Beyonce's connection at all. Although they're not equally sharing, Taco is only using bandwidth that Pear wasn't using anyway. So this is what, uh, so a good deployment threshold should not penalize Taco when Pear already has inherently poor performance. This is what we mean by demand aware. For example, maximum fairness, which accounts for the demand of a flow, is demand aware, but equal rate fairness, which just says each flow should get the same rate, is not. So let's, lastly, we say a deployment threshold should be future-proof. So by future-proof, we just mean that a good deployment threshold should be useful on a future internet where none of today's current congestion control algorithms are deployed. So we care about this property because many discussions around new TCPs considered something called TCP friendliness. So TCP friendliness focuses on behaving just like Reno to be fair to, to Reno, even though very few center, senders on the internet probably even still use Reno anymore. So I'm gonna give you a little silly toy example that explains why it's really silly for us to keep binding ourselves to Reno. Uh, 
So consider this example where in the past, Skype and a bunch of other services used some algorithm taco, uh, tomato. But let's say tomato was terribly inefficient. So today, Skype, along with many other services, switched to using a much better algorithm, and they're now using pear. Now, when taco comes along, does taco need to be nice to pear and tomato or just pear? Well, if no one uses tomato anymore, new algorithms only need to be nice to pair, whatever the current status quo is. So this is what we mean by future proof, that a future proof threshold would only require taco be nice to pair, whatever the current status quo is. So I say all this to make this point that traditional notions of TCP friendliness are just not future proof. In a future where no one uses Reno at all, we should not be relying on thresholds bound to Reno or any other particular algorithm's behavior. So these are the five properties of a good deployment threshold. So next I want to define a new deployment threshold based on something we call harm. So let's begin by motivating this. So when we're trying to show deployability, we typically run experiments where we have pair, whatever the current status quo is, versus TACO, our new algorithm, and we want to measure performance. So if we care about something like throughput, that might look like this, right? So we have pairs performance, we have TACO's performance, and fairness would say compare these two bars. So you want to say, um, is this outcome fair or not? But remember, because of status quo bias, we don't actually care what happens to TACO's performance when the two compete. We only care about what happens to pairs performance. In particular, if this was if this uh, was pairs performance alone, we care about how pairs performance has changed now that it's when it's competing with Taco. So comparing this red and green bar. So this leads to the proposal in our work, which is that a deployment threshold should be based on how much harm Taco does to pair. So let me illustrate what we mean by harm with an example. So uh, again here, Bay is trying to do her video conference, and let's say that Pear is able to use all of the available bandwidth and gets low latency when Pear is alone. But now, when Jay-Z comes along with his taco flow, Beyonce's uh, throughput goes down and our latency goes up. So here we would say that Jay's connection has harmed Beyonce. So let's be more uh, sort of formal about our definition for harm. So harm is measured between 0 and 1. And like Jane's fairness index, uh, sorry, it's measured between 0 and 1 like Jane's fairness index, where 0 is harmless and 1 is maximally harmless, harmful. So our harm fu function takes two inputs. The first is x, where x is pair's solo performance. So this is pair's demand. And it takes y, where y is pair's performance when it's competing with TAC. Thus, to compute harm for more is better metrics like throughput, harm is x minus y over x. And for less is better metrics like latency, harm is y minus x over y. So in this exa example then, TACO causes 0.5 throughput harm to pair, and TACO causes 0.95 latency harm to pair. So you should be able to see that harm is multi-metric, right? I can compute throughput harm, latency harm, jitter harm, loss rate harm, whatever other kind of metric I want. It's also status quo biased, so the two numbers in our harm calculation are only based on pairs performance. I don't care what pairs performance is here. And it's also demand aware. So here we define the demand as pair solo performance. So harm gives us a way to talk about Taco's impact on pair's performance. But I haven't said how much harm is okay. So for this, we need a harm-based deployment threshold. And our key in proposal in our work is that a uh, harm-based threshold should be the following. Taco should not harm pair much more than pair harms itself. So that is, any new CCA shouldn't harm the status quo more than it harms itself. So what do we mean by much more than? Well, so far we've computed the harm that Taco does to pair. And now we want to compare the harm Taco does to pair to the harm pair does to itself. And say, how do we compare these two things? So in the paper, we discuss three possible ways to compare these. Um, but today, uh, I just want to discuss one possible threshold, which we call equivalent bounded harm.
And equivalent bounded harm, just like its na name, says these two things should be equal. So the harm taco does to pear should be equal to the harm pear does to itself. So returning to our previous example, we looked at what happens when taco competes with pear and can see a certain performance. And we compare that to pear's solo performance to compute the harm that taco does to pear. And now we have the same scenario, but with pair versus pair, and we get certain performance outcomes. And we wanna say, what's the harm that pair does to pair? So let's go back to our harm calculations to compute this. So before this is what the harm that Taco did to pair. And now we wanna add in what's the harm that pair does to pair. So here you should see that the throughput harm is the same because I get the same throughput for top for pair when pair competes with taco and when pair competes with itself. So under equivalent bounded harm, taco would be okay. But if we look at latency harm, it's clear that taco is much more harmful to pair than pair is to itself. So under equivalent bounded harm, we would not consider taco deployable. So a harm based threshold is practical. We can already see that pair can achieve certain performance when it's competing in practice with pair. So it should also be po possible for Taco in practice to get similar performance outcomes. Certainly if Pear can do it, then so can Taco. And it's future-proof, right? There's no baggage here. There's no tomato here that I'm trying to behave like. The only thing that matters is what is the status quo and how does it compete with itself? So if tomorrow the status quo is banana, then that's what we would compare against. So is equivalent bounded harm like the perfect deployment threshold? Well, it certainly meets all of our criteria, as we previously discussed, while alternative thresholds based on fairness or TCP friendliness certainly do not. So it's better than what we had before, but we do have some concerns about equivalent bounded harm. So let me show you a little example. So here um, I'm illustrating uh, an issue with equivalent bounded harm, where let's say when pair competes with pair for two long running downloads, one flow gets seven megabits per second and the other only gets three. So there's significant imbalance here when pair competes with itself. And under equivalent bounded harm, any new taco algorithm couldn't improve this imbalance, which seems problematic. So this is a hotness paper, and it's an open question what's exactly the right harm-based threshold. And in the paper, we define two other thresholds that allow Taco to take a little bit more bandwidth, but we're not sure what exactly is the right threshold. And there are other open questions uh, in the paper. For example, when you run performance experiments, there are, of course, going to be a distribution of these results. So should we care about the average worst case results or something else? Also, we can't possibly measure the performance of pair versus taco in every possible scenario. As we ask, so we ask, what are the right workloads and networks we want to test for deployability? And even if we have a threshold, can we really even enforce it? So while we haven't exactly settled on the perfect threshold, here is what we do believe. Fairness is wrong. It's not working as a practical threshold. And thus, we need to stop making excuses for why our new algorithms are not reading an unrealistic goal like fairness. And lastly, reasoning about harm is the right way forward. And it's going to give algorithm designers a much more realistic goal. So that concludes this talk. Um, please look at the description box for a link to the paper. And if you have any questions, please shoot me an email or ask me a question on Twitter. And thanks for listening.